I grew up with moss and I always, you know, walk around barefoot on it and I, I've always loved it. And I wanted to figure out how I could successfully grow it inside. And one of the things I found about moss is they do not like any kind of chemicals in their water whatsoever. Um, so the best thing to do is to try and collect rainwater. Um, I actually just got a whole bunch of snow from outside and put it in buckets so it'll thaw out and that's what I'm going to water the moss with and that's just the one of the most important things about moss is keeping it moist and finding a water source that is not chemically treated and at the same time you don't want distilled water because that's just totally empty so you want to if you can try and collect rainwater and save that for your moss. I like mason jars just because I happen to have them handy all the time but you could use any kind of container and then just get some kind of covering like a cloche or some kind of lid that'll cover it up, like this one I had made. And then what we could do is just kind of keep a cloche over top to keep it moist all the time. Mason jars, like I said, everybody seems to have them. And you know, all you do is just keep the lid on to keep it moist. And if it needs a little air to breathe, you just take it off for a few hours and put it back on. The other thing to keep in mind about terrariums is that it is a mini ecosystem. And you're taking something from outside and you're bringing it it back in and enjoy inside your house. So whatever container you choose to use, that's the universe for your terrarium in there. So you wanna think about in the outside world, you know, you have your rainwater that'll filter through, you know, your plants down through the soil and into the rocks. So I like to recreate that same thing when I'm making a terrarium. So I just got some gravel from outside and that'll be the first thing I put into my terrarium. The gravel and the rocks create air spaces in the bottom. It's a very moist environment, so you wanna make sure that the roots still have some air pockets to breathe if you have any plants in with your moss terrarium. So start out something like that where you still have some like holes and areas for like the air to kind of build up. And then we use a soil blend here that has pine bark and rice holes and our compost that we make here at the Rodale Institute. It's really lush and like kind of almost peaty soil mix because we have such great compost here. So it works really nicely for the terrariums. And you really don't need that much soil. If any of you have seen moss growing, it, it just pretty much hangs out on rocks. So you don't need that much. Now I'm gonna incorporate a Selaginella plant with my moss. So that has a little bit more of a root structure and you want to kind of, you know, be realistic with your container size. You know, don't try and jam something this size down into like a little jar. So just trying to get a uh, good little piece. And what I want to do is kind of just pair it up with some rock moss and maybe some cushion moss. And then this is sheet moss we have here. We have three varieties. So the first thing I'm gonna do is lay down this selaginella with its root structure, cause that's the most fragile one of them all. And I just kinda wanna tuck it in. Uh, a lot of people have fancy like forceps and things to use when they're making terrariums. I find that chopsticks are terrific and everybody has them. And this cushion moss, I, I don't like to break up the cushion moss. It already comes in little pieces and I've found personally that if you just use the piece itself, the moss tends to live longer. Sheet moss on the other hand is really easy to break apart. It's very resilient. So that's like if you have little areas you just wanna tuck in, the sheet moss is much better. But I'm just gonna use the cushion moss first. And the cool thing about mosses is you could really like squeeze them together to get a really thick, lush planting in there. And I feel like the closer the better when it comes to moss. So I've got one of those and I'm gonna just break a little piece of this cat moss, rock, mo rock cat moss off and tuck that in the corner. Oh, I don't even have any room, I don't think. Oh, maybe a little bit. See, and there's just one little space. There's a little bit of roots exposed from that selaginella plant. So I'm gonna try and just get a little bit of sheet moss down in there. And there we go. 
we've got a completed terrarium ready to water with some fresh water from outside. And I like to keep, I usually keep the lids on my terrariums all the time. And, you know, it's a living, breathing thing, so it still needs air. So every now and then I like to open it up for a couple hours, like maybe while I'm getting ready in the morning or while I'm making dinner or something, I'll pop them open. And then before I go to bed, I'll make sure I put the lid on. The other cool thing about terrariums is that they smell like the woods. So you could really, it's nice. It's nice if you have an apartment and you miss that, you know, being outside. It's like a little piece you could take home. That's all I've got.